And so Zacchaeus, after meeting the Lord Jesus Christ, got saved. The proof of his salvation is a change of his attitude towards his money. If his salvation is not genuine, he will never do this. He will never have made the decision to give half of his riches to the poor and pay back four times those people that he have got a lot of money, stolen a lot of money. And so he ended up being not really praised by Jesus, but that Jesus said he got saved. His salvation, his conversion was real. And now his money is not his master. He is the master of his wealth. That's why he was able to do this and make this decision. And this is the one, this story is the one that leads us to understand this parable. And the parable begins with a nobleman who represents the Lord Jesus Christ himself who was going away to lay claim to his kingdom and he won his kingdom through the victory in Calvary. And the distant country that he was talking about is no other than heaven, from which he will return one day to establish his visible kingdom in the millennium. And the noble man was preparing to leave for his long journey. As he, as he prepares to leave, he gathered his ten servants and gave them, each one of them, a mina. A mina is an equivalent or an average wage of a worker for three months. And this is where we get the idea of the steward. And so in the Bible, a steward is literally a trustee or a manager. A steward is literally one who is given the task to manage his master's assets. He is not the owner, he is simply the manager. And so today, if you are a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, you are his steward. And as we find in this parable, the very first concept, we must be willing to accept the fact that everything that we possess belongs to him. It's easier said than done, right? We know that. We know that everything that we have belongs to the Lord Jesus Christ. But have you come to the point to, to the point in your life to really that you have decided to accept that truth? But yes, Lord, you own everything. I know. Everything that I call my own is yours. I don't have anything. You are just entrusting to me all these riches, all these material things, so that I can use it for your glory and honor. So is it clear? I am not the owner. You are not the owner. We are only the manager. Back in the Old Testament, God clearly warned the Israelites who were about to enter the Promised Land. And before they entered the Promised Land, God told them in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 8, a very clear warning. Because God knew that when they enter the Promised Land, there is a tendency that they will forget God because they will be prosperous. Now listen to this, in verse, beginning from verse 11 of Deuteronomy, chapter 8. Be careful. These are the first words that God gave them. Be careful that you do not forget the Lord your God, failing to observe His commands, His laws, His decrees that I am giving you this day. Otherwise, when you eat and are satisfied, when you build fine houses and settle down, and when your herds and flocks grow large, and your silver and gold increase, and all you have is multiply. Verse 14, then your heart will become proud and you will forget the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. Verse 17, I love this verse. You may say to yourself, my power and the strength of my hands have produced this wealth for me. You hear this a lot, right? 
A lot of people claim that all the things that they have acquired belongs to them because they work hard for it, right? And they claim to have the right for it. And then verse 18, but remember, the Lord your God, why? God said, for it is He who gives you the ability to produce wealth. And so confirms His covenant which He swore to your forefathers as it is today. God speaking through Moses, warning the Israelites, when you go in that land, you have to be very careful. Because time will come in your life that you will be prosperous and you will forget God. Because you have become so rich that you are thinking that all the riches that you have is yours. And don't forget that it is God who gives you the ability to produce wealth. Why? Because God promised them, right? God promised them to be successful. God said, I will be with you, I will bless you, I will protect you, I will make you prosperous. But that doesn't mean that they will not sin anymore. But that doesn't mean that they will not forget God anymore. And God knew. And, and it happened. Most of them, a lot of them really did this. They failed, they forgot, they even worshipped other gods. And so, beloved, in terms of our assets, of our blessings that we have received from the Lord, we need to think of these three things that applies to what we have right now. First is our time. This is the blessing that God has given us. Remember, time, time is precious, right? Time is priceless. We count the seconds, we count the minutes, we count the hour, we count the day, we count the weeks, we count the month, the years. Why? Because time is important. And time is one of the gifts that God has given us. The Lord has gifted us with, with sufficient time to serve Him. We may not have the same length of time in this life, but all of us has the potential to make use of the time and to maximize the time for service of the Lord Jesus Christ. Remember, Jesus Christ only lived 33 years on this earth, but He maximized that, given the, God, the glory to His Father. He was able to satisfy God with how He served Him. Beloved, time is fleeting. And so we need to make the most of our time to serve our Master. And then we have these talents. All of us are gifted with special skills that we can use to serve the Lord. We have all these abilities to serve the Lord and we need to use those talents for the work of God that He has entrusted for us. We have this treasure. We have this money that God has blessed us. We are working hard, we are earning, and those are part of God's blessings. All our material possessions, especially our monies, are gifts from the Lord. And we can use them or waste them. God wants us to invest them wisely for the advancement of His kingdom. And the crucial question is that whether or not we see these things as, as assets that God has entrusted to us. And, and the question is, what are we doing with them? After we have given what belongs to the Lord, if you're giving your tithes, after you have given your tithes to the Lord, what are you doing with the rest of it? It's still, God is still watching us. And so we are trustees. The second thing, the second important truth is that we have a task in this life. God has entrusted to us with this, all this, the time, the talent, and, and, and the treasures. And the next truth we find in this parable about the stewardship is found in this verse of the master to his servants. In verse 13, put this money to work until I come back. In the American Standard Bible translation, it says, do business with this until I come back. That means, from the time we discovered we are capable of doing things and we are capable of earning and we, are, we have all these talents, God is already talking to you and saying, do business with it, multiply it. You need to affect others' lives with everything that you have. 
And that's what God is expecting from us. 